Well, bonjour, Hubert. Thank you for having us here. Bonjour, Courtney, and welcome to Minnesota. Thank you very much. So you've come a long way in five years. I think the first time we met was in November of 2012, that investor day in New York City. So if you were to sort of sum up the last five years, what so would you say? Well, Courtney, yes, five years ago, the times were different. Uh, we had negative comps, our margins were going down. There was questions about whether we were gonna survive. And I'm so proud of what our team has accomplished in the last five years. We've had four years of positive comps, our margins have expanded. We have been in the last five years in the top 10% of the S&P 500 from a total shareholder return standpoint. Uh, customer satisfaction in up, we're gaining share, so we've become relevant again, and I couldn't be more proud of what our associates have accomplished. So that was Renew Blue, but Renew Blue has passed. You're done, you've moved on, you've come out a stronger company as you just went through all those metrics. So now you have a new strategy. Can you tell me a little bit about what that encompasses for someone that may not have been following along so closely? So uh, a few months ago, at the beginning of the year, we unveiled our new strategy, which we call Best Buy 2020, Building the New Blue. Renew Blue, which was our strategy for the last five years, was a lot about fixing what was broken. So we ensured that we were price competitive, we improved the customer experience online, in the stores, we had the partnerships with the vendors, we took cost out and that allowed the resurgence. So with Best Buy 2020 building the new blue, we're focused on growth. We've taken the time to look at the strategic landscape and we think that we are operating in a very attractive uh, environment that's full of growth opportunities. And I'd like to talk to you about uh, this because it's so exciting. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the strategies that you're going yes. through. And one of them is the in-home assistance. So you've been piloting it for a while, but you're rolling it out nationwide. Can you tell me a little bit about what the workforce looks like now, knowing it's in its infancy, and what the opportunity might be for Best Buy financially? Yes. What we've discovered uh, over the last several years is that uh, while, while technology is very exciting, Buying and owning technology is not always an ideal experience, and it's complex. It's a very emotional purchase, and we found that it's, e it's easier to have the conversation in people's homes and have to deal with somebody who knows a lot about a variety of products, all of the brands, all of the products across the entire home, and is able to connect with your needs. What are you going to do with the technology? So they come to your home for free, uh, and uh, then they build a relationship with you. So economically for us, it's attractive because it helps uh, make customers happy, build a relationship, and grow the revenue line. And so it's free, so how does Best Buy make money from this? How does this benefit you financially? So with our in-home advisors, yes, we'll come to you for free, uh, and what we're banking on is building a relationship with you. We're finding also that by going to your home, we unlock unmet needs, things that you didn't want to talk about, you couldn't know, you wouldn't know how to express the needs. So we feel we're getting more revenue, the margins are also better, uh, and we feel that we're going to have a, uh, a long-term relationship with you. So that's, that's the excitement. Do you have any anecdotes you can share so far from the pilots, examples of what folks discovered in their home that then they turned to Best Buy and, and bought to fill their home with? Well, there's an extreme example that uh, uh, one of our in-home advisor, Ronnie, talks about, which is a, a woman in Texas. And she was, uh, she's been physically you know, handicapped for a few years. She cannot move around her house. So her door was always uh, open. And it was, she had to sleep with the lights on at night because she couldn't uh, activate, you know, turn on the lights uh, and off. And so uh, Rodney has been able to uh, meet with this person at her home and has designed a complete solution where she can you know, lock the, the door remotely, she can turn off uh, and on the lights with, a, uh, with voice activation. And so, so Rodney has changed the life. We're, we're in the business of essentially impacting the life of people. We're in the happiness business not just selling a product, but changing people's lives. This is very exciting. And this all sort of goes hand in hand with another one of the pillars of the strategy, which is the idea of the connected smart home. I mean, that's a category Best Buy really wants to own, both in service and in product. How important are millennials to that strategy now that it's an age group that's finally moving out of perhaps their parents' houses or, or renting an apartment with a roommate, buying their own homes? Yes, there's some very exciting trends in the market. So connected products are proliferating. Everything, technology is now pervasive throughout the home. And yes, millennials. So one of the things that people don't necessarily know is that Best Buy our market share with millennials is higher than in any of our categories. So we do particularly well with millennials. And yes, they are finally leaving their parents' home. And so they're actually moving to the suburbs. And so they need to equip their home. And they're, of course, many of them are uh, technologically savvy. And so they want to equip their home with the basic necessity, but also uh, cool technology. 
And so we have an entire smart home uh, strategy. We're redoing our stores around that. Uh, we have uh, a, a Best Buy smart home powered by Vivint, uh, home security and automation solution that we're uh, deploying and rolling out. So if you're a millennial, we're here for you. And so millennials also have parents that are getting older. Yes. And I understand there's another program that yes. you're rolling out, Assured Living. Can you tell me about this? This is going to be something new we're going to be hearing about. So Assured Living, we have this in a couple of markets. In, in, we're testing in Minneapolis and Denver. It's a great illustration of our strategy, which is to address the human needs of our, of our customers. So we have in the U.S. an aging population. And so the alpha mom has to take care of herself, her family, her kids, but also her aging parents. And technology now with sensors that you put in somebody's house, you know, the, the, the alpha mom can make sure that her parents are doing fine. So if there's a sensor under the bed or in the medicine cabinet with an app and artificial intelligence, she'll be able to be alerted if something is wrong with her parents. So that's a peace of mind for the aging parent and the alpha mom that's quite extraordinary. So with technology, we can solve human needs in a very meaningful fashion uh, and change people's lives. So this is very much the essence of Best Buy 2020 with this, uh, this example. And so Amazon is a competitor that we talk about in a lot of ways. They have a number of services that they're also trying to deploy. So what keeps them from sort of encroaching on your territory, copying your ideas more or less? Well, you know, Amazon is, a, is, a, is an amazing company. What we're focused on at Best Buy is our customers. And we think we have these amazing assets. We're able to help customers online in the stores and in the home. So not just online. We can go to people's homes and with Geek Squad, we've had Geek Squad for you know, 20 years. Uh, there's 20,000 agents. There's millions of visits that we uh, take to uh, people's homes. And so uh, there's a huge opportunity to help customers in a very meaningful way. And at Best Buy, we think we can be very, continue to be very successful with this combination of assets online, in stores, uh, in going to people's homes. You certainly have the experience, that's true, with, with Geek Squad. And the other interesting thing with Amazon is in some ways, perhaps Amazon is your friend. You have, you're have you going to have 700 of these in-store uh, simulations or demonstration points for the Amazon Alexa and the Google Home Assistant. You also said that Prime Day actually was very good for you guys online. So is Amazon your friend or your foe? Well, uh, this is a world of competition and, and frenemies. We've had, we've sold Amazon's products in our stores for many, many years. Courtney, we're obsessed by the customer. So our mission is to provide, offer to the customer the best products in the market and the range of products across brands and product categories. And Amazon has some uh, with Alexa and Echo and Fire TVs, some, some great products. And one of the things we do for the world's foremost tech companies is showcase the fruit of their billions of dollars of R&D investment. So there is an Alexa experience in our stores, there's also Google Home, there's of course Apple, Microsoft, Sony, LG, Samsung, Canon, Nikon. Everybody wants to be in our stores to showcase. And then from a customer standpoint, it's a great opportunity because you can look at everything that's possible and then we can help you bring all of this together. So that's a very unique thing we do. And yes, that includes showcasing in our stores uh, products from people who sometimes are our competitors. And mobile is an important category too. Again, one of the three... Yeah important categories that you've pointed out going forward. Now we know a little bit more about what Apple has planned for the iPhone. We didn't know when you all had your most recent earnings call, but now we at least have a little bit more of an idea in some of the timelines. So now that we know, what do you think the impact will be for Best Buy, positive or negative, of the new iPhone launches? Is it exciting enough? It's, it's very early, and, and so I'm not going to provide uh, you know, to our investors today an update on our uh, guidance for uh, Q3 or Q4. But for us, it's always very exciting when there's uh, some great new products uh, out there that can uh, do new things for, for customers. So we are very appreciative of our vendors. And it's uh, not just Best Apple. Standpoint. I mean, we know that you also are looking at, you know, hoping there's a new Samsung device as well, because that was a, a bit of a pain, I mean, quite literally, last year. What happens if it doesn't come? So with, with, with the phones, we're very excited about this category, because this is a, a large category in which traditionally our market share has been relatively low and one of the things that one of the initiatives we have with Best Buy 2020 is to improve the shopping experience, the customer experience. Buying a phone can be daunting. It's a very expensive uh, purchase. You have many choices you need to make and we have a number of initiatives uh, and improvements to the shopping experience, making it easier for customers to find out what plan they should buy, making it more efficient to uh, get the phone. So we're very excited about the opportunities we have there. 
tablets have been a bit of a weak point uh, for the industry and for Best Buy it hasn't been a source of strength. Are tablets going to be obsolete the bigger the phone gets? Do we need a tablet? I think what we've seen, you know, what we see in our space is uh, technology, new formats come and go, so there's peaks and valleys. What's exciting is that across the various categories, as a whole, we, we all of us tend to spend more and more uh, on, on technology. So tablets have been, have been soft in the last uh, several quarters. Computing has been very strong, and as you see in our stores, with the Windows stores and the Apple store, we offer a wide range of very exciting products, and we, our teams do a great job of almost creating, working with the key vendors to create uh, markets and, and commercialize new technology. So five years ago, computing was not as exciting, and now it, it is very exciting. So the, 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 the customer has migrated maybe towards more you know, exciting laptops. Maybe we have a phone, we have a computer, That's tablets. Right. Who knows? So I want to talk to you a little bit about the holiday. I don't know what you're going to tell me, but you know I have to ask because it is the most important time of the year for those of us that follow retail so closely and work in it every day. It's a promotional time. You've said that before. Last two holiday quarters, negative comps. But you've had a really strong go here the last couple quarters. So is this the holiday season to bust out of that negative comp trend for holiday? So as we have our investor day today, we're not going to be focused on, uh, on holiday. It's more a strategic view of the... Uh, of what we can do in the next several uh, years as we've launched the Best Buy 2020. So we're going to talk to our investors about the growth opportunities we have uh, over the, the medium term. Okay. Um, that's what I would say. Today. Okay. Yeah. So your stores, you have not um, been a retailer that has looked at stores as something negative. Most of them are profitable. There are some underperforming stores uh, that, that you have decided to close over the years. Are you making any changes to the store footprint? So. Uh, one of the lessons from the Renew Blue uh, transformation is that our stores, and I said it five years ago, are a great asset. They're a great asset from a customer standpoint because the op opportunity to touch, feel, and experience all of these products. It's a great asset from a vendor standpoint because so many of the world's foremost tech companies can showcase their products in, in our stores. And it's a great asset from a supply chain standpoint with in-store pickup, edge in from store. So we've significantly upgraded the customer experience in our store, our associates are much more knowledgeable, much more proficient, uh, the, and then physically they look uh, much more attractive. We'll continue to invest in improving the customer experience in our stores. Uh, I think what customers are looking for are experiences. They want touch, feel, and experience. And you're right, closing stores is not a strategy for us. E-commerce has been really strong, and stores, of course, also help leverage some of the initiatives that you have and the different offers for picking up, same day, reserving, all of these different things. Um, what do you think eventually will be the equilibrium point for the percentage of sales that are online and the percentage that are in stores? So we're very proud of the fact that over the last five years, we've doubled our e-commerce business. This year, we'll do significantly more than $5 billion. It's about 15% of our sales, it's growing very uh, quickly. Uh, I think 18% compounded annual growth rate in the last uh, four years. So if it gets to 20% uh, or more of our business, I wouldn't be surprised in the next uh, few years. This being said, we don't think about this as two channels. I think, again, the ability for us to help customers online in the stores and in the home is a unique competitive advantage we have. I think investors look at it as two separate things sometimes because of the cost differential and the margin differential between the two. But you're narrowing that gap, is that right? Yeah, we and we're not driven by profitability from that point. We're obsessed by the customer and we want to make it easy for the customers to, to buy uh, wherever they want, whenever they want and get service wherever they want and whatever they want. So. We think about this as an integrated fashion. Each channel has a slightly different role, uh, but we are obsessed by the customer and helping them, helping the customer online in the stores and in their home. Why do you think Best Buy, before even your tenure, didn't explore something like the in-home advisors before? Why now is the right time and why not in the past? So in-home advisor is one of the most exciting opportunities we have. We've had uh, a number of our associates go to people from the Geek Squad, you know, million visits uh, to people's homes. The Magnolia Design Centers also have had that. Uh, what is new now and allows, allows us to expand the in-home advisor program is the fact that everything in the home gets connected. If you think about this, uh, across entertainment, productivity, your home office, now your kitchen, uh, your energy management. And so uh, the need for advice in the home, the complexity, 
the, the interoperability requirements across the entire home is something, uh, is something new. So we've taken a set of great assets and updated them for you know, what is today's opportunity, which is to really help customers in their home. It sounds like something a lot of people would be interested in. I'm thinking of my parents, for instance. We always need to help them yeah, reprogram right. their universal remote or yeah. goodness knows what. But how are you going to get the word out if my mother doesn't go into Best Buy all that often? How are you going to let her know about the in-home advisor? So uh, today the in-home advisor, the way you find out about uh, the in-home advisors is in the stores and word of mouth, which is not a bad way to, uh, to grow what is in effect a third channel for mm -hmm. us. Uh, as uh, we ramp up and uh, as we've just rolled this out, we'll use some of our, you know, marketing vehicles uh, like email and our website to uh, make people aware of this. We'll also, uh, you know, take orders from you, Courtney, after this interview and be happy to help your mother out. Has there been any hesitance um, in the pilot cities for folks having someone come into their home and sort of look under their technology bed sheets, so to speak? It's, uh, you know, it's of course voluntary, so you, you know, if you don't want us to come to your home, <laughs> we won't. Uh, and that's where you know, finding the right associates, the right skill profile, uh, and then training them uh, and, and so that they can you know, uh, be comfortable in the home and, and do a great job of building rapport with the customer. This is, the idea sounds very easy. It's mm -hmm. actually very hard to execute. And, and that are, gives us a competitive advantage. Are you finding um, these associates that they already work at Best Buy, they're already blue shirts, or are you pulling in experts from other locations? So both the in-home advisors, you know, they're, they're coming from both inside. So we take system designers from the Magnolia Design Centers, blue shirts, uh, Geek Squad agents and that have the right profile, as well as we recruit outside. And Best Buy today is a very attractive place where to uh, come and work. So people who've been in the business of helping uh, people with their audio video systems uh, and that find, want to find a new home at, at Best Buy. So you're still going to have the Geek Squad, yep. the Magnolia support, you're going to have the in-home advisors, yep. and then also total tech support as well? Oh my God, total tech support, this is so exciting. So, of course, we've been in services for a long time with the Geek Squad. Typically, uh, the Geek Squad services were attached to a single product, so you would buy that. It was repair-oriented, let's say, for your computer. With everything being connected, what our customers have told us they want is support across their entire home. So the service is attached to a household. It covers every technology product you have in your home, whether or not you bought it at Best Buy, and we're going to help you. So as an example, you know, if Netflix is not working tonight, is it because of Netflix? Is it the pipe getting into the home? Is it the Wi-Fi? Is it the TV? Is it the streaming device? Honey, please help me. And we are honey. And so it's moving to... Uh, uh, almost a, mem a membership, a, a subscription. We're, go we're going to be here for you. Uh, we'll we'll uh, have we'll install the product and help show you how it works, and then we'll support you uh, as as the case may be remotely, or we'll come to you. So how does the subscription work? What's the cost? The timeline? So we're testing a number of models. We're in 200 stores uh, since uh, since last week. One version is $199 per year, so it's an annual uh, membership subscription. If we come to your home, it's going to be a discounted you know, price of $50 per uh, service. Uh, and in other markets, we're testing uh, $20 uh, per month. Uh, and then, you know, early next year, we'll, we'll see how we roll this out. But th this, is, this is something that really meets the, um, the customer. If you take the combination of in-home advisor, where we'll come to you and help you design the right solution. With Best Buy Toll Tech Support, we got you covered. Hmm. So we talked a lot about growth. I want to ask you a couple questions about costs because that's also an important yeah. part of what you've been doing and what you will continue to do. Some look at Best Buy and say, how in the world can you strip out any more costs? So how can you do that? How can you strip out more costs, find more savings? Yeah, so Courtney, a big part of Renew Blue has been taking $1.4 billion of costs out that has helped us finance the price investments and the investments in the customer experience. Earlier this year, we announced another $600 million of cost savings uh, by the end of uh, fiscal 21. And it's, it's, uh, to, to explain what it is, it's about taking inefficiencies and non-quality out. Think about a manufacturing company. There's always defect in any kind of process. And so, for example, in our enterprise customer care center, we receive a lot of phone calls from customers. Uh, some of these phone calls are because of you know, something we've not done well. So let's fix what not, we're not doing well. Let's take quality to the best possible level. Let's take non-quality out. You know, it's the lean approach to process design and execution. And we think that this is a gift that keeps giving. 
in our DNA today, there's the idea that every year we'll take cost out by getting more and more efficient uh, at what we do. And so one way I, I know that you've been working on being more efficient is in returns. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. think you were doing some interesting things there. Can you tell us a little bit about where you were, where you've come, and in ways that the customer actually benefits? Yeah, the, the beautiful thing about uh, our efforts to be efficient is that it improves cost, quality, and service at the same time. So let's take the delivery of appliances. Uh, for a percentage of the cases, you know, the appliance will be damaged along the way, either by the vendor or by us or, you know, when we deliver it or when the customer's home. Nobody likes to do this. It's terrible from a customer standpoint. It costs us money, and then we have to resell the appliance as an open box uh, and at a, at a you know, deeply discounted uh, basis. So we've been working on every step in that process to make sure we sell the right appliance to the customer, that we look at measures, is it going to be, is it going to fit well, will it go through the doors, uh, and then training our associates on the delivery and installation piece and then on the return journey uh, uh, as well. So it's been, this is a great example of what we talk about in terms of driving efficiencies, improving cost, quality and service at the same time. Hmm. So you, you were a, a fixture that we saw in Washington, D.C. earlier in this year, um, particularly around the border adjustment tax. That looks like it's off the table, so there's a sigh, sigh of relief to many retailers. Have you continued to be in touch with the lawmakers in D.C. about sort of where business fits into this administration, making sure that your voice is heard about other parts of tax reform? Yeah, we're very much at the table, and tax reform is a very important priority for the, for the country. Amongst you know, the major economies in the world, we have probably the highest or one of the highest corporate tax rate, which is not a good incentive to stimulate the economy. So the plan to lower a corporate tax rate, I think, makes complete sense. Uh, I think for a company like us, we're paying 36 percent. We're paying the highest of anybody because we don't have any meaningful deductions. And my view is that uh, the savings, the tax savings will be reinvested in jobs and in investments and get the country uh, moving forward and, and create opportunities for a v wide variety of, uh, of Americans. So the bulk of Best Buy's business is in the United States, but you do operate in Canada and Mexico, and NAFTA is another agenda that the president, agenda item that the president talks about a lot. So what is your viewpoint on NAFTA for the trade agreement? What do you think needs to be re renegotiated, if anything at all, to help Best yeah, Buy? Yeah, NAFTA has been a very important part of the development of North America in the last several years. It's, it's now been several decades when, since NAFTA has been established, so not surprisingly, it needs to be modernized. There's topics that did not exist 20 years ago that need to be included, uh, and so that's where the discussions are. The Business Roundtable has shared a few principles and priorities along these lines. So we very much believe that modernization is appropriate, uh, and we should keep in mind that you know, free trade is something that, uh, if it's done well, benefits all of the participants. Have you been keeping in touch with lawmakers about all of these issues? Our main priority uh, in the last several uh, months has been around uh, corporate tax reform and the border adjustment tax and lowering tax, making the country competitive again. That's been our main focus. And speaking of being competitive, we have a lot of dreamers in this country and I know that the the DACA program is something that you want to make sure stays a permanent part. You recently signed a letter with 350 or so more other business leaders. So how important is that? Is that to you? You know, my heart goes out to these uh, dreamers. They, they came to this country through no fault of their own. And I think there's broad consensus that uh, we need to find a permanent solution for them. Also, from a, an economic standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. These are hardworking uh, people who. Uh, contribute to the economy, and uh, I think uh, I'm really hopeful that people will find a, um, a permanent solution to this uh, to this issue. We need to do this. As a business leader here in the U.S., are you worried about President Trump and his reign over this country? What happens to our economy, our citizens? Uh, you know, as a business leader here, I'm eager for the, the country to do well and for everyone, whether it's the, the, the corporate world or Washington, to do the best job they can to move the company, the, the country forward. That's what we all need to do. So I think we're about ready to wrap up. You're going to talk to your investors. Is there anything else you want to make sure that investors understand about where Best Buy is and where you're going? What's your future for Best Buy? So when we talk to, to our investors, I think uh, rightfully we'll be very proud of uh, you know, sharing what we've done the last five years, what we've learned importantly. What, what did it take to win in this environment and how our unique assets have allowed us to, uh, to do well. Again, the ability to help customers in a meaningful way online, in the stores, uh, and, and in their home. And then looking ahead, 
you know, uh, what we want to share with our investors is that this is an opportunity-rich environment and that we have a, a unique set of assets that can help us uh, bring uh, um, great solutions to, uh, to people's needs. People are looking for more than a product and a transaction. They're looking for solutions to their needs. They're looking for a relationship. And we think we're uniquely positioned to do that. And we, we're excited to be on that, on that journey, as was the case with Renewable. It's going to be a journey, and we're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to following along. You guys have really made a lot of progress. It's very impressive. So congratulations and good luck in the future. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.